Hello, everyone, and welcome to another rollicking episode, hope it's rollicking, of Mondays with Monday, and that's me, Jim Mundy, the historian for the Union League Legacy Foundation at the Union League of Philadelphia. And it's October 26th when this is first being aired, so we're getting close to Halloween, so I hope you like the tie. Okay. So tonight's episode is going to be something that I think I'm going to create a series out of and call it I Didn't Know That. So this is episode number two. So the first one was Robert Cornelius and the first selfie in America, and this one is going to be something very different. Um, we're going to start with a Union League member named Archibald Loudon Snowden, and we'll see where the story takes us, okay? So having said that, I'm going to jump on to share screen right away. I hit that, hit that, and I wait for this to come up, and then we do that. And it, voila, it worked once again. I'm always amazed when I do that. <laughs> I didn't expect it to work. So anyway, so episode two. And here we go. We're beginning with Archibald Loudon Snowden. You can see he was born in Cumberland County, Pennsylvania in 1835. Cumberland County is the county to the west of the Susquehanna River once you cross over from Harrisburg. Carlisle is the county seat, if that helps you take uh, it geographically. Uh, his ancestor, William Snowden, uh, received a large number of land patents from the Duke of York in, eight, in 1699. So they became uh, large landowners in what was then known as Philadelphia. It was an English city, not the Philadelphia you know today. All right. We go through a number of ancestors. His father, Isaac, uh, is a doctor in the U.S. Army, serves under the infamous Andrew Jackson in the Seminole Wars. And he would then come back to Pennsylvania where he would get, he would marry uh, Mary Bynes, B-I-N-E-S, and they would beget Archibald Loudon Snowden himself. So he graduated from what was then known as Jefferson University in 1856, now it's Jefferson, Washington, uh, in the southwest corner of Washington County, southwest corner of Pennsylvania. In 1857, uh, he came to Philadelphia because his uncle James Ross Snowden was a director of the U.S. Mint. And at that point, he was named a the registrar of the U.S. Mint in 1857. But I'm sure he had the brains to go with the job. Otherwise, his uncle wouldn't have given it to him. So uh, then in 18, let's see, sorry, 1857, so in 1860, the election, Abraham Lincoln, uh, he becomes a Republican. He had been a Democrat up until then, but he thought that the Democrats were basically ruining the manufacturing economy of the country, and so he became a Republican. And they did a much better job with it. That's for darn short. So, so in 1861, the Civil War begins, and he helps raise a regiment in Philadelphia and is uh, listed as lieutenant colonel. So he would become an Army veteran, although it's um, kind of conflicting interesting whether he actually served in the regiment or not. But he did join the 1st City Troop. And at that point, he would become eventually a captain in the 1st City Troop. And the 1st City Troop is the oldest organized um, military unit in America to this day based in Philadelphia. So uh, in 1864, he marries Elizabeth Smith, and they would have four children. And that's where the tale will take us eventually. So, so in 1866, he is named the chief coiner at the U.S. Mint, and apparently he's becoming a nationally known expert in numismatics, that is the numismatics, the study of coins, medallions, and things like that. He would go on to write papers, uh, articles, books, and things like that on it. So in 1872, while still the chief coiner, he would join the Union League of Philadelphia, December 13th of 1872. He's now a league member. All right. And things are getting just better and better for him. So in 1879, President Rutherford B. Hayes will name him the superintendent of the U.S. Mint. Quite an honor and quite a position. All right. Uh, so he is now firmly embedded as probably the greatest, uh, if not one of all, if not the greatest, but certainly one of the great experts in his field in the country. Right? I mean, he knew all about minting coins and, and actually, uh, I don't know if there were any patents, but he helped develop machinery that would make coins and produce them at the U.S. Mint itself. So, so quite a resourceful man. Um, he would have that position until 1885 because that was when Grover Cleveland was, admitted, was elected in 1884 and Cleveland was a Democrat and the Democrats put their own people in. So he's out, he's out of a job. And that's fine, though, because he was doing fine. So in 1889, uh, after Cleveland was replaced by Benjamin Harrison, the Republican, Harrison will name 
Archibald Loudon Snowden, or A. Loudon Snowden, as he became known, as the American ambassador to Greece, Romania, and Serbia. And he would remain in that position until 1892, when he would then be named by uh, Harrison as the American ambassador to Spain. Actually, he was, he was known as the major plenipotentiary, but we'll call him ambassador just the same. He would leave that position in, eight, in 1893. Again, Cleveland came back in office in 1892 uh, and puts his own men in, in those positions. And so Snowden basically retires, goes back to Philadelphia, and like all good proper Philadelphians, becomes involved with the Pennsylvania Railroad. And why not? It was becoming the country's largest company, corporation, and it would eventually be the largest railroad in the world. So, um, so he's well positioned in Philadelphia economically, socially, and politically at the same time. Um, and like all good proper Philadelphians, he would become uh, a commissioner on the Fairmont Park Commission and eventually would become its chairman as well. Uh, he would die at his home at 1812 Arch Street on September the 6th of 1912. So, so that's Archibald Loudon Snowden. Um, and who would have thought that a league member would have been the superintendent of the U.S. Mint to begin with? But our story doesn't end there, though, folks. Well, there's a lot more to it than that. I, hopefully you'll be a surprise. So let's get on with the story, shall we? All right, here we go. So A. Loudon Snowden and his wife Elizabeth Smith Snowden begat Carolyn, Caroline Smith Snowden. And you can see her birth and death dates there. And she married Stuyvesant Wainwright. And that Stuyvesant, by the way, is the Dutch... Peter Stuyvesant, uh, who was the last Dutch governor of New York. So an old, 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 old New York family, pre revolutionary War, and the Wainwrights were equally old, but in a different part of New England. So, so they, that's that. So Caroline and Stuyvesant begat Loudon Snowden Wainwright. You can see his birth and death dates there. All right. He would marry... Eleanor Painter Sloan. All right, still with me? I mean, this is, this is pretty easy genealogy so far. All right, now this guy that would become known primarily, now he was involved in insurance companies in New York City, would become known though as one of the great American yachtsmen of his age. So that's worth it. All right, moving on. Loudon Snowden Wainwright, Jr., 1924, 1988. Marries Martha Henriette Taylor, 1922, 1997. So Loudon Snowden Wainwright Jr. Uh, basically had a career working for Life Magazine in New York City. He became a writer for them, uh, wrote over 200 articles, uh, and uh, became an assistant editor at the same time. So he was um, involved in the magazine publishing industry for most of his career. Right? Uh, and he would also die in New York. And they're all buried at Cedar Hill Cemetery in Westchester County. So... All right, so what happens next? They beget this guy. And if you don't recognize him, I'll, we'll figure that one out. Okay, so I'm going to share another screen. So stay tuned, folks, because I'll do a little, I'm trying to do a little audio here. We'll see if it works. I haven't tried it yet, first time, so stay tuned. Okay. Sing along, everybody. You must know. Okay. It looks crazy. Gotta go claim that. So that's that. Okay. Okie dokie. Now let me go back to share. All right. So, and that, as we, I, I'm hoping you've figured out by now, all right, is, any guesses? Loudon Wainwright III. Okay. All right. So let me, um, I'm going to stop sharing that. Let me go back here. So uh, let me see if I can bring my PowerPoint back up just because I do want to show you what he looks like in today's world. So, so who would have thought that 
a Union League member in the 19th century would have beget a god, um, a, a very, very famous. That's uh, not going to work for me. Darn it. Sorry about that, folks. Anyway, so who would have thought that a Union League member once upon a time would have beget a singer like Loudon Wainwright the third, whose 1972 hit, the only one he ever had that hit the charts, was Dead Skunk in the Middle of the Road, all right? I mean, it, that's an interesting family. I mean, his father went to St. Andrew's School in, in Delaware, or he went to St. Andrew's School in Delaware. He never went to college. Uh, but his mother got him a job at a boatyard in Rhode Island, and there he met a gentleman who gave him the guitar, and that apparently was the end of that. And, uh, and as I say, the rest is history. So um, interesting character, wonderful music. Um, I also remember him as playing Captain Spaulding. I don't know if it's a reference to the Marx Brothers or not, but he played Captain Spaulding in MASH over three years, 1974 to 76. And altogether, I believe he's created 24 albums. Uh, just a very versatile musician, uh, a character, as you can imagine, and all that fun stuff. So uh, I hope that became a complete surprise and that, oh, I didn't know that, <laughs> okay, so, so to speak. So, so uh, and after that, you don't need me to tell you a whole lot more about Loudon Wainwright III, because you probably already know it, or you can find it out easily enough. So, so that was that. I, and I, I hope you are surprised. I hope you were surprised by it. So, so anyway, enough of that. Uh, thank you for joining us once again. It's always a pleasure to have you watching Mondays with Monday. Uh, thanks to the Legacy Foundation uh, at the Union League for making these episodes possible. And stay with us. Uh, we've got one more. The next episode actually is going to be our last one on American presidential election politics and the Union League. And I think this one's going to be just as surprising and fun as the last one was. Right. So, so stay tuned on Monday, November the second, the day before the election. It seems appropriate. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching. Enjoy. Stay safe because it's still getting crazy out there. And we'll see you next week. Thanks and goodbye.